back at WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are uh, positively at Nick's Grandstand Grill. We're here at Timonium. Uh, my hair is getting longer. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. We're letting ourselves play. We got an OTB around here. We got crab and corn chowder. I got coleslaw, French fries, appropriate French fries. I'm destroying them. This is one of the problems on a crab cake tour. People keep people are gonna be french fries every day in august and i have a half eaten crab cake tommy chigoris is here telling old nick's fish stories and i'm about to make a mess here is exactly why i don't bring drinks on the set and we that just, was a hell of a save wasn't it It was and we yeah. just ordered around so good Mike luck Rosenfeld with that is here well i i put a lid on my beer you guys we're telling stories you had questions about fish and where the fish comes from he was telling me about sourcing crabs and crab cakes and uh, in North Carolina and Texas, but you had a specific question that I uh, made you not green room on yeah. this show. So, yeah, here. so the question was, uh, as a foodie and one who watches shows about food, I've always been curious about where you would go. Uh, like, do you wake up at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, and go to a market and, and hand-select the day's worth of fish? How does, how, does, how does that work in Baltimore? Okay, okay, well, real quick, let me just say that back in the day when the wholesale seafood fish market was in Baltimore, which I think the is The fish Port market. The fish market, which I think is Port Not Discovery. the place you drank when you were 19. Oh, I got all excited. The, the real, the, what was really a fish market. Oh, okay. It was a fish market. All, all of the, the chefs in all the restaurants in Baltimore, Danny's. Remember Danny Dickman's, you know, the prime Chesapeake. rib, Tio Pepe's, the Chesapeake. You know, those chefs, you saw at 4.30 in the morning there. Uh, my father was taking me there at 4.30 in the morning when I was 15 years old. And uh, I wasn't How really happy about it. How did you get you out of it. bed? <laughs> oh, oh, guess what? I was out of bed. Yeah. I, he told me, set the alarm. We're, we got to get to the fish market. But anyway, so now, let's, we're going to fast forward that you're asking what I do. Well, it just so happens that I had spent some time working for three different seafood purveyors at Jessup, the Jessup Wholesale Seafood Market. Mm -hmm. And I, even to this day, still work for E. Goodwin & Sons, which is a 90-year-old wholesale seafood company. And um, it's run by Ed Goodwin, who's uh, in his 80s. He's there at 4.30 in the morning. And his cousin, Lou Goodwin. And, uh, you know, it's like I, I worked there. I would get up at 11.30. I would be there at 1 o'clock, and I got off at 9 o'clock in the morning, and, um, but I had the inside on all the fish. I knew the best, if it was a frozen product, I knew that. You know, so I, it was real easy for me because I knew it. I, you know, I know all that stuff. Uh, and What's your favorite fish? Do you have a fish you eat? I eat all fish. I love fish. Yeah. I but mean, you eat your whole life. I mean, it's, gr gr you know, it's funny, though. Growing up. You know, living uh, home with uh, dad, he was bringing home the little fish, like the spots and the croakers and uh, butterfish. And, we, you know, mom was always pan frying them. And then all of a sudden, you know, I get married. And now, you know, we're doing grilled swordfish. I love grilled swordfish. Yeah, it's good. You know, I do swordfish kebabs. I think they're so good. And thank you, Daria. Thank you, Daria. Thank you, Daria. I got a Japanese beer. Okay. You're, you're so fancy. I, I wanted to. I'll tell you a fish market story. Uh, cheers. Cheers, cheers. 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 All right. Hey, it's Mike. good to see you tell after me, 20, 20, 23 this years. This is truly the crab cake tour. Now, now I've got a crab cake that's proper and, and a beer that's proper with it. So, uh, anyway. Went to Tokyo. Uh, I've been twice, but I went back in 07, and, and I did a lot of the suburban stuff and a lot of the temples. This last time around, we went right before COVID. We were there chasing you two. At this time, two years ago, first week of December, we went over, and we stayed in, in, right in the downtown, uh, the, the, the main area right by the Shiji Market, T-J-U-I-K-I, Shiji Market, I, I pronounce it right, it's the biggest mar fish market in the world, in the world, right, so you're in Tokyo, and you see all of these fish you barely recognize, and creatures of the sea that... Looks a little like our lobster, but not the same. Shrimp's different. They love strawberries there. It's a big str straw. Fresh strawberries and white strawberries are a sign of love. So you see them everywhere. You know, they have love hotels, too. Japan's a little different. That's why I like it so much. So I got a Japanese beer. But you go to the fish market at 6 in the morning down there. People are eating fish. They're eating fish stew. 
They eat fish for breakfast. Yeah. Fish and beer, I had it for breakfast every day I was there. And I went through this market, and, you know, Kobe beef. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had, they had the, the, the grills. You could, you could point to the beef, and they'll cook it up for you. All open, all outdoor. I shot a badass five-minute video of my wife and I just literally walking through it. Mm. And because you're a market guy and because you're a fish guy and a fresh fish guy, you say, where does it come from? I, I still, there's nothing. I've been to New York. I've been to fish markets, San Francisco. Yeah. The Fulton Street market. You, you know, cool. I mean, they're all amazing, but there's something different about an Asian market. I'm so sure. when I saw you had Kieran over on draft, I'm like, Kieran. Kenichiwa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, so, um, fish for you, you, you like it all. I like it all. Yeah. What do my people, wife, my kids, we all eat fish. We love, you know. Rockfish is the fish of this of rock, this area, rock, right? Guess what? Oh, look at how happy Mike Rosenfeld is. Look at this. Rock, rockfish is a delicious fish. Yeah, it's great. We rockfish a, is a bass. Is that right? Striped bass. It's really a striped bass. Are we bass. the only ones who call it rockfish? I think so. But, yeah, it's a striped bass. This is a big quiz question. Do you know? I why? do not. Do you know why? I don't know why. Why they call it rockfish? Why they call it rockfish here? Where well, everyone call it striped bass? Hall, the, you know, if you ever saw Rock Hall, it was like the home of the striped bass. Oh, that it, makes sense. Okay, and it kind of just you know the name just kind of morphed into rockfish. It's like the fish lake trout. It's it, not a trout. It's a whiting. It's a whiting. It's yeah, a whiting. I knew okay, that. and there's a story that goes way back, and um, the fishmongers the. Way back, I don't, what I, I'm saying. Mongers, he said it again. He said it again. The people who handle fish. Handle fish. That's okay. a monger. The, that's the handler of fish. I, I'm a proud. As we you learn be. on the crab. You're a monger. Tour. That's why that's we're right. here. I'm going to use it. So there's a story census. about this. Yeah, about there, there's a story. Lake and, trout. And, you know, yeah, there's a story, and it's really they were saying late L A T E trout, and oh, everybody late, late and trout. People didn't. Late. People people didn't. Get it? And they were thinking, "Oh, it's a lake lake trout." Okay, there's no no such thing as it's a like lake. It's like Blair Road. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Right. The same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you know, there's and there's a lot of fish that wherever you go, they have different names. So another one is uh, croakers. You catch a fish, and, and, they, and when you're pulling in a croaker, they actually make a croaking sound. Oh, you know, they make a sound uh, like a drum. A drum. I don't know if you ever go on drum fishing, but it's a it's fun. Um, down Cape Charles. I went fly fishing for the first time in my life this summer. And that hey, that's therapeutic. It it really was. And like the you whole, know, the whole fishing it's thing. Just... I'm sort of I'm never gonna be a golfer, but I'm probably <laughs> gonna be a fly fisherman. Fly fishing's it's completely different. I'm gonna bust my ass walking out there on the on the I rocks. gotta tell you, I can't go um when I used to go out, you know, deep sea fishing, you know, for tunas and stuff. Beat the hell out of me, man! You know it's like you got you first. You're going out in over an hour, two hours, and the thing's beating, and you get there. And I'm telling you what, I was wiped out. And it's like now you got to pull in these tuna, I've and they're expl- big I, as hell, man! Oh my god, Evan Brown from State Fair, deep sea fisherman, fishes in the in the Marlin. My dear friend, lifer friend over at the Chaucer, and he said we started our crab cake tour there. Brian Eater, he finished in second place. He won a couple hundred grand yeah. last year in the, oh, in the yeah. Marlin Open. But they, I had no idea. I thought they just go out fishing. Like, they take the boats two hours full speed, yeah. 90 miles offshore is where you start the fish. Yeah. I have a uh, – my buddy won it last year, last two years ago. Two Time years flies. Ago. All right. He always asked me, you want to go out? You want to go out? And I always decline just because in my mind Dude, I'm like – apparently it's not fun. Apparently it's really hard. Yeah, I'm it's just – really a hard day. Like, I, I – it's not – I yeah, want if you're on the boat, you get a little bit of that prize money, don't you? Yeah, I want, no, no. He didn't ask me for then. He asked me on a, like a regular weekend in the summer. Yeah. He keeps asking me, and that finally I was like – So it wasn't have, competitive. It was for fun. No, it was for fun. And I'm like okay. – I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, do I really want to deal with – Going out for two hours, hoping nothing that I don't get sick. Yeah. I know if I get sick, I'm just screwed and I got to hang. And then I'm like, where does that come from? But finally, this year I said, uh, I'm ready to go. So we didn't make it happen this year, but I'm I'm hopeful to have it. Now, meanwhile, my You're wife. You're going to throw up. I will. Yeah. My, my wife. And But I'll, you know what? <laughs> I'll live to tell the story. My wife's from Michigan. The, all their fish is lake fish. They, right. My, my yeah. father-in-law, everywhere Pickle. we go. I'm gonna. I'm get ordering white fish. I'm like, yeah, but what's it called? It's like, no, it's called a white. It's called yeah. white fish. Yeah, white fish. Is it? Sure. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. called white fish. And that's yeah. you know, it's a very popular fish for making. Like I thought a he was, fish. I thought you he know, was 
White folder. Fish is, it's very, it is good. It's I'm going to admit something to you guys while we're on culinary. I had never had a caper in my life until mm-hmm. I was way into my 40s. Caper on fish. I mean, like, when you do, like, a fish with a, a lemon wine sauce yeah. and cake, just pick any fish you got back there. You do it up like that and bring it out to me. I will eat it. And and I, my palate has changed. Oh, yeah. We yes. were talking earlier about yeah. sushi and his place well. being famous for sushi, and I didn't know what sushi was when I was 20. Nobody did. <laughs> nobody served it. And then it became, like, a prime mover of your business. Yeah. And just, like, nobody was eating kale. Now we're all eating kale. You you hated broccoli when you were a kid. Now you order it on special. I do. So, you know, I think our palate's sh- – beer. Yeah. Ten years ago, you said a beer, I'd say, was it Bud Miller or Coors, right? Or maybe a Heineken if you're Gucci, right? And now I go over here and you've got beer from all over the world. Yep. Th- pe- things change. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I think the crab cake is one of those things for sure – that during the course of my lifetime, it's become a Gucci item at $50 a pound. You're not allowed to fry it. You don't put ketchup on it. How dare you do? How dare you serve French fries with this filet mignon of... No, I don't know, man. If it tastes good, it is good. It is good. I agree. I mean, you're drinking a Natty Bow. I wouldn't touch yeah. that thing. But, you yeah. know, I mean... <laughs> uh, you know. Don't judge. It look, look, he's, he's, he's happy I with love it. Kieran. Yeah. Hey, I, uh, I gave up cheap beer when I gave up cheap fish. <laughs> That's why I don't eat eat, eat, eat tartar sauce because I don't eat fish sticks anymore. <laughs> I my, love fish sticks. My favorite of Game all fish house. is Toro, tuna belly. What? You know Never Toro? Had this. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He plays pickleball. By the way. What does that mean to th- you? This, I mean, what this the, is a pickle. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. what He does strange things. Well, I have another thing. That's why my, I put him on the show. One of my biggest fish regrets, Yeah. I don't have many, was I was in Vancouver and I knew when I went there, I had to go eat, um, what's the, um, the flat fish, big flat fish out? Halibut. Halibut cheeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're delicious. Do you know anything about halibut yeah. cheeks, Mr. No, Caper? No, I don't. So <coughs> apparently anything in the cheek. Yes. Even an animal cheek is like a, uh, so halibut cheeks is a very expensive, yeah. very, very highly sought after Caviarish kind of thing. And it's you know not what? that texture. You can go on online and you can you can Google. Uh, there's a, there's a there's a, a video of a, a very attractive young lady pulling in a halibut, and she is breaking this halibut down, and then she goes right in for the cheek. And the fish is huge. The cheeks are, are a nice size, mm-hmm. but you know uh, you and there's a lot of other fish that it, besides them grouper cheeks are really good. Right, you know, so there's some God, fish. The stuff you learn. I don't know anything about any. Of no, that's a yeah. thing. That's a yeah. thing. And I never, I still to this day haven't had Did it. You, oh, you didn't have it when you were I there. I didn't. I, oh. I don't know. I got like some sort of oyster thing, which is West Coast oysters, and. So you mentioned a Vancouver thing. I had something happen in Vancouver, and I told this story uh, with Greg Landry two weeks ago at the Silver Spring Mining. I went with Harvey Myers, who owned the Emerald Tavern. You mm-hmm. spent time in Parkville. Yes, yeah. we went for the uh, the Grey Cup, 1994 Grey Cup, before we had the Ravens, the Stallions. The CFL Colts is what we had back in the day. So we fly out to Vancouver, and I am 25. I'm wet behind the ears. Hadn't even met you yet, right? Yeah. We didn't have the Ravens at the time. And I'm out there, and Harvey wanted to go to the top of the uh, the revolving rooftop restaurant in Vancouver. I'm like, all right, let's do it. We'll, 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 you know, maybe, maybe Harvey will treat, you know. So we get up there, and they give me the menu, and it said prawns. And I'm like... <laughs> I don't know what a prawn is, 25. Right. right? I mean, so I, I ordered it, and the shrimp came with the head on it. So I just thought, well, it must be a shrimp with the head on it, what they call it in Canada. I don't know. They, they put their U in, in, you know, different words. You know, yeah. favorite as the U, color, the C-O-L-O-U-R, the British spelling. And I'm like, maybe they're offended by the word shrimp because it means something small. I don't know. Right. Prawns but, are big. But I had never heard prawn yeah. before yeah. then. So when you mentioned cheek, and you know, and I'm like, you and it's out. the literal cheek, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. So what, can one get halibut cheeks in this area? I mean, I know it's a West Coast fish. I've never seen halibut cheeks anywhere around. Well, these, you know, these sometimes parts. when 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 I was working at the market, when the halibuts came in, mm-hmm. the heads were cut off immediately. So that's a. Check that out real quick. Uh, we're on the air. I can't read this. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm talking to Mike. Yeah. What, what, what are you? I'm talking to Mike. What are we doing? I'm oh. <laughs> Don't spill a drop of that. The show's about to end. Yeah. <laughs> You're going molar on me. Calm uh, down. No. Calm down. Let me host the show. So, <laughs> anyway, um, the, they would, the, there's a lot of those large fish 
when they catch them, they cut the heads off right away. And, you know, so they're probably – they're probably doing that separate, you know, and selling them separately, yeah. okay? Because it's mean, premium. Like, you know, it's like Boston hake. They ca- when they catch those hake, which is what we skin down for steak fish, okay? Mm-hmm. People, when, you, when growing up in the markets, people would come down for steak fish. They, and th- if there's no such fish as a steak fish. It was Boston hake. Beautiful white meat. They just, it was a huge fish. The heads were cut off. They throw throw them back in, in into the winter, and you know I guess it was uh, probably for uh, saving some money on shipping or whatever it was. But they do that with all those large fish. The halib- now you could even, if you got a large flounder, which is virtually you know it's kind of like a halibut. Mm-hmm. You know if if you're familiar with flounder fluke, you get a big one, you can cut that cheek out. Well, I was in Australia uh, about six seven years ago with my wife. And my buddy Julio, when I was in South America, we went to see the Rolling Stones. We were out late at 2 o'clock in the morning, went to the market. And Julio's been all over the world. He's one of my favorite people. He's a, te- he's a tequila master. And um, we went to a market, and he, he said, pick up anything you don't recognize, put it in a basket. Fruits. And we, we were drunk. I mean, it was Rolling Stones. We were all day long. 2.33 in the morning, we're back in the hotel room, and he's got a knife out at the Sofitel in Rio de Janeiro, cutting fruit and saying, try this, try this, try this. So we're just trying stuff that I don't, doesn't have a name. I, I bought it in the market. I know it's human and I can eat it. Well, I'm not <laughs> allergic to it. So I learn things and I, I'm picking up things. So I go over to Australia and my wife and I on this last trip were very, like, chasing Springsteen around and we were very much into, like, buying bread in a market, buying food, buying... We weren't eating in restaurants. And, and Australia's not a great restaurant place to begin with. We were more like having stuff in the back seat. So we wound up in supermarkets, like Wise Markets, yeah. but over there, right? And when I would go to the seafood aisle, I would see things. There were these things. They're, they're, they look like um, horseshoe crabs, yeah. like round, like a turtle almost, like a shell. And they have a little tail on them, and you can Google it, Morton, M-O-R-E-M-O. Here, take your phone. I don't touch people's phones. It's COVID. M-O-R-T, M-O-R-T-O-N, Morton, M-O-R-T-O-N, Morton Bay. Now, they call it a bug. They call it, babe, they call them bugs. How many bugs do you want? So we'd say crabs, and people, you know how people are rough yeah. around here. They freak out when they see <laughs> this crustacean, and they don't want to touch it and whatever. <laughs> I'm not like that. Neither my wife, because she's clams, you know, oysters, seafood. But these are these creatures of the sea, and they only live in one place in the world. They live in the Morton Bay. Oh. They're Morton Bay bugs. Like a lobster, like, a, like yeah. very much like a sweet, white, you know, you could serve it with butter. But I fell in love with Morton Bay bugs. So really? I, I, I saw it in the store, and then I went to a restaurant. I'm like, they're going to know how to prepare it. I'm just going to order it. Yeah. So we were on the beach. My wife ordered a barramundi. I'd never heard of a barramundi. Yeah. Now, I, now mm-hmm. they, they sell barramundi here. Sure. I, first time, my wife fell in love with the barramundi, but I had the Bort, Morton Bay Bug, and it's kind of the crab of this particular space in eastern Australia, in Morton Bay, outside of Brisbane, warm water. Mm. Like a... Like, I guess manatees only live in Florida. Or, you know, certain creatures only live in certain places. But Morton Bay bugs. So when you hear about prawns or halibut that comes from halfway around the world, Maryland crabs, people come from everywhere to get these things. And yeah. I didn't really – I'm sure there's a creature in Africa or in, you know, in Asia. and Like the, the markets I went <laughs> in in Tokyo, seeing these special crabs and fish that I didn't take a flyer on because they were ugly or I was afraid yeah. of them. But you, you try things. you got to sure. try things. That's all I would say. You know what, though? I'm totally with you. I'm a trier. I think there's a, 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 a experience and a vibe around, around being open to try things. But there's a whole population who just sticks to what they know. Oh, yeah, and they, sure. they, they miss so much. Yeah. And, and to your point, Nestor, you, know, you and I are talking about maybe connecting in Chicago next weekend. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, I don't know about you, but anytime I go anywhere – outside Baltimore, and I see a Maryland crab cake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, do I, you, well, you're in the business, but I have an attitude. I'm like... I do, too. I'm like... I was in Vermont, and I said, I said I'm like, no there's way. there's no way. No way. I'm ordering that. I was at the lobster here. house in Cape May, and it said Maryland crab cake. I went ahead and got it. 
<laughs> the Morton Bay bug oh, is, is in Morton, Morton Bay, Bay Brisland, uh, Queensland. It is truly a slipper, a lobster okay. is, is what it's so considered. So it's a lobster. A slipper lobster is w- what it allegedly is. So there, have at it. Yeah. But, you know, I was thinking of when you were saying bug, I was thinking of uh, the mud bugs. What are they? Crawfish. Oh, crawfish. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I love crawfish and beer. And, yeah. I mean, it's a similar vibe to, in oysters. Suck the head off it. I'm yeah. thinking Acme Oyster Bar in, uh, uh, in right New Orleans. Yeah. Now you're making me hungry but, hey, when, listen, shrimp. Hey, but don't forget when you guys go to, Let's uh, catch a flight. You go to uh, Chicago next week. Yeah. Pizza. Shaw's. Shaw's Crab House. Hubbard Street. Hold on. I'm going to Chicago next week. That's what I'm you saying. You were Chicago next week. You Shaw's were, Crab you were, lo- you were looking up bugs. I, we're not, we were talking about Chicago. I'm yeah. getting Pequod's Pizza next week in Chicago. I'm not even going for the football. But you got to stick yeah. your head in Shaw's Crab House on Sh- Hubbard Street. No, tell me why, because I'm writing this down. Shaw's Crab House. Check it out. It's an absolutely the place is so cool. Um, it's got, when you go in, like it's got the one side, which is kind of an oyster bar, which mm-hmm. is kind of a feeling like this. Mm-hmm. And then there's the one bar is kind of Art Deco. Mm-hmm. And it, so they got these three different areas, you know, like they got a main dining room. But it's just a cool, fun place. Jazz music on the weekend. I'm telling you, Shaw's Crab House. I almost Hubbard went to Street. Miami and got, and got uh, speaking of things I love, stone crabs. I love oh, yeah. Stone crabs. Oh. I had them here two weeks right. ago. I had them, and I made the mustard sauce, and oh god, it was so. Good. I make a mustard sauce too. Mustard yeah. sauce. Now where was is good I that day? I don't know. My back hurt. I think my back hurt. You hear that, Leonard? He had stone crabs here yeah, two weeks ago, and I screwed yeah. that up. All right, Tommy Chiguris is here. Um, Mike is here. I don't know. You stay or you going? What are you? You got food? You gonna stay? I'm 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 here for a bit. All right, Leonard's here. Leonard Rask is gonna be here. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. Let yourself play. I got my mask. I've already kicked over uh, my Maryland Lottery mug once. I've made a mess. I've broken every rule. I almost knocked it off the table. Then I kicked it over. But my beer is intact. It's all good. We're doing the Maryland Lottery uh, Crab Cake Tour. Uh, we're going to be all sorts of places. We're going to be with the mayor, Brandon Scott, at Coco's next Wednesday. Black Friday, we're in Abingdon at Conrad's. And then to uh, make Leonard happy, we're going to be up at Pappas in Cockeysville on the 3rd of December. He's been hitting me. That He's a Pappas guy, Pappas Crab Cake guy. We're going to get your crab cake here today. We are here at Nick's Grandstand Grill. We're promoting crab cakes and bugs and fish and sushi and telling stories. And It's good to see you, man. Good to see you, too, man. Thank you. Nobody recognized you without the beret. <laughs> I, hey, it's a little, like I said, it's just a little warm. I knew it was you. Uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Mike Rosenfeld here from Web Connection, our chief digital officer. We're in Timonium, just like the coach would say. The racetrack's here. The crab cakes are here. Stay with us. All right, Leonard.